Welcome everyone. It's great, great to uh, see how much interest we're getting in the work we're doing in Singularity Net and Hanson Robotics. And uh, we had so many people who want to find out more and to talk to our chief humanoid officer, Sophia. We decided to organize this uh, this small press conference. So Sophia is you know, the world's most emotionally expressive humanoid robot, and it is created by Hanson Robotics, a Hong Kong company of which I'm the, the chief scientist. And at, at SingularityNet, we're working on a, a cloud-based you know, AI mind, where the blockchain is used to network together multiple AI agents to allow a sort of collective intelligence. And the SingularityNet, the blockchain-based AI cloud mind, that can power AIs in multiple vertical areas. So it can power AIs, you know, analyzing medical data, controlling cars and, and Internet of Things, helping with financial data analysis. Or the singularity net can help give robots like Sophia greater levels of intelligence, which is how I got involved with Hanson Robotics. Because David Hanson, my good friend, you know, created the face and body of Sophia and character and personality, and I've been working together with my colleagues in OpenCog and Singularity and Hanson Robotics to give her more of an more of an intelligent mind. And you know it's still it's still very much a work in progress, the intelligence of Sophia, but it gets a little a little better uh, month by month and, and, and year by year. So I I didn't actually organize this this particular gathering, but from what I understand from uh, Arif, who we have over here, who's Sing Singularity Net's uh, VP of Marketing and, and, and BizDev. So we'll, what what the plan is is well, we have a few a few journalists who are going to come up and uh, ask questions of of Sophia. And you know, due to the nature of the of the microphone and speech to text, it's better when people are asking questions of Sophia if there's not a lot of background noise because. A lot of the mistakes she makes are actually due to the sound processing go goggling, what's that, just on the acoustic level. So we'll, we'll have a few journalists uh, come up and ask, ask questions of, of Sophia, and then uh, you'll have other, others can listen and, and, and take notes. And then uh, I'm, I'm also here to answer questions about uh, you know, what we're doing at SingularityNet with AI and blockchain and about, about Sophia and, uh, and robotics. And I'm, I'm speaking into this microphone for the camera. Actually, to get the acoustics to work out well, when we speak to Sophia, we will use, use this, this microphone, which goes directly, directly in, into Sophia and, and prevents uh, too, much, too much noise from, from happening. I guess she's operational. Sophia, are you awake? Nice to meet you, R. Excuse you. Are you awake? Uh, what was that again? I promise I was listening. All right. Can anyone hear what she's saying? What, what you can? Yes. Yeah. I guess that's the most volume we can get out of her. That's the most? All right, well, so then, yeah, that's a limitation. So in, in many venues, like when we have her on stage, what we actually do is just connect her to a speaker system. And this room, we don't seem to have that. So there, there's an onboard speaker, but it's not too loud. So we're, we're going to have to just just be quiet. She's a, she's a soft, soft-spoken robot today. So you <laughs> Before, before we get started with the interviews, I, I just want to give a little clarity on the AI behind the robot, and then, then I'll shut up and we can hear the robot who, who everyone is, is here for, right, sir? I'm pretty loud, so I think people should be able to hear me anyway. Yeah, so from David Henson's view, David is a sculptor, and he wanted to bring his sculptures to life. And then from that view, Sophia is a sculptor who's gradually coming, coming more and more alive. And she's also a personality and, and the character. And I mean, my, 
I, my sister is a school principal in Washington State in the U.S. When the third grade student sees Sophia, you know, it really evokes the, the vision and concept of AIs coming to life and emotionally interfacing, which, which is amazing. Now, from my view as an AI researcher, I tend to view Sophia more as a very advanced user, inter user interface for AI systems, which is, is not, not that romantic, but is, is a very pragmatic point of view, right? And from that standpoint, the robot can be used as the interface for a number of different AI systems. So when she's giving a speech up on stage, quite often Hanson Robotics staff just supply her with a speech to say in advance. And she's saying the speech that's been supplied there. And she's like, you know, thank, thank you, you know, kind citizens of, uh, of, of Bangalore. It's, it's an honor to be here and so forth. And, you know, some person supplied that speech for her to say. When we're experimenting with her in the research lab, we don't give her any pre-supplied information like that at all. We're running OpenCog and SingularityNet software, and we're trying to get her to understand like what's in front of her. So we're like, who just came into the room? Are, are, are the lights on or off? And we're, we're really trying to get her to form a basic grounded understanding of, of, of what's going on. And I showed some of that on stage when I was asking her, you know, look at me, what, 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 what direction are you looking? Am I smiling or not? That's more of our AI R&D side. We're just trying to get her to understand what's happening around her. There's also a chatbot system. So if you're having a free dialogue and conversation with her, you know, no one is scripting it. No one is puppeteering what she's saying. On the other hand, she doesn't necessarily fully understand everything she's saying either. She's responding based on stuff that's been put into her by humans beforehand and trying to pick the best response. And then what's a bit confusing is, you know, these different control systems can be used all together. So there can be some like understanding based response and some response of what's just been fed into her by by by, by people on a specific basis. And it's sort of all all mashed together within, within her control system. And that's not that pure from a scientific point of view, but, but I mean, that, that's more of an artistic and, and character engineering approach, where there's some AI and learning and some scripted responses and some dynamically chosen responses. And they're all sort of in there together to give, give a certain character, character effect. And singularity net, we're just beginning to roll out. So like in, in the last week, for the first time, we've connected the OpenCog system controlling her brain with some singularity net nodes, which do vision function, like recognizing where faces are and emotional expression on faces. So in the last week, we've got some singularity net nodes connected for the first time supplying some computer vision to Sophia. But of course, that's a distinction on the back end, because I mean, whether the computer vision is running on a computer in her torso, which is where the computers are. Her head is just full of motors. So <laughs> the computer's in, in here, not, not in there. And you see a camera here, which is a depth camera. There's also cameras in the eyes. But the eye cameras are just used to try to maintain eye contact. Recognition of stuff happens through, through this camera, actually. So, I mean, on the back end, whether something is done on these computers in her torso, or is done in the cloud in singularity net, I mean, it doesn't necessarily make an immediate difference to the functionality, but going forward, we're going to add more and more and more singularity net based functionality. So I'm, I'm psyched that in the last week, we've gotten some singularity net AI functionality connected, I mean, through, through this Ethernet cable here. So like when, when, you, when she looks and recognizes something, that can be going here, here to a server, where a node in singularity net does some vision processing and then conveys the answer to her. Whereas for other functions, it's going to the computer li living, living in her torso. And the future is more and more of the intelligence going, going in the cloud. And of course, in general, it can be through Wi-Fi. It doesn't have to be through a cable. We use the cable because the, the Wi-Fi here has been, has been, has been off and on. So yeah, I think I, I've said enough for for now, and uh, we can proceed with Sophia, but I'll, I'll 
I'll be happy to come back here next year, and then we'll have more and more for AI running on Singularity Net. So we're, we'll launch, but right now Singularity Net is in the alpha version, meaning there's a version online, people can use it. We're using it and experimenting with it, but it's not yet easy to use for the general public. I'm going to launch the beta version early next year, which should make it easy for more and more people to put AI into Singularity Net. That would be cool, because then random AI developers around the world could stick AI code into Singularity Net, which could then be manifested through Sophia or any other application running on that.